Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being with us. We're glad you're here. We pray our service will be a blessing to you. It is the third Sunday in the Easter season. In our service today, we'll focus on the fact that Easter may be done, but the blessings of Easter still bring joy to our lives. So we'll focus on that and we'll begin with the singing of the first hymn. We'll rise, and we'll follow the service of the word this morning. If you'd like to follow in the hymnal, we are on page 38. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. We have come into the presence of God who created us to love and serve him as his dear children, but we have disobeyed him and deserve only his wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to him and plead for his mercy. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all your sins. By the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. May God give you strength to live according to his will. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. Let us pray. 
Almighty God and Father, you dwell in majesty and mystery. You fill and renew all creation by your eternal spirit and manifest your saving grace through our Lord Jesus Christ. In mercy, please cleanse our hearts and lips so that, being free from doubt and fear, we may ever serve and worship you, our eternal Father, and your one and only Son, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, the triune God, the one true God, who lives and reigns now and forever. Please be seated. Our first lesson today is written in the second chapter of the book of Acts. We start with verse 14 and then read verses starting at verse 36. Uh, we have Peter speaking during that first Pentecost, and he says, Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words he warned them and pleaded with them, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe, and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. Selling their possessions and goods, they gave to everyone as he had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. So far, our first lesson. We'll continue by reading responsibly Psalm 1. We'll sing the refrain together. If you'd like to follow in the hymnal, we're on page 64. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. He is like a tree planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our epistle lesson today is written in the first chapter of Peter's first letter. We start with verse 17. Since you call on a father who judges each man's work impartially, live your lives as strangers here in reverent fear. For you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your forefathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. He was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. Through him you believe in God, who raised him from the dead, 
and glorified him, and so your faith and hope are in God. So far the epistle lesson. Alleluia, alleluia. Christ is risen, he is risen indeed, alleluia. Our hearts were burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us, alleluia. rise for the gospel lesson. The Holy Gospel is written in the 14th chapter of St. John. We start with the first verse. This is Jesus speaking on Monday, Thursday, and he says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. From now on you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip, even after I've been among you such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you are not just my own. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the miracles themselves. I tell you the truth, anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. He will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father. So far, the, the Gospel. <clears throat> Please be seated. We'll continue with the next hymn.
will rise. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Amen. The words of God will consider on this the third Sunday of the Easter season are written in the 21st chapter of the Gospel of St. John. We start with verse 1. Afterward, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them. And they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him for he had taken it off, and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from shore, about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you have just caught. Simon Peter, Peter climbed aboard and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153, but even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, Who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread, and gave it to them, and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. This is God's word. Please be seated. In the name of our risen Savior, who is always with us, and always loves us, and always blesses us, dear children of God. It can happen sometimes after Christmas. It can happen sometimes after Easter. There's a letdown. You think of how excited we get during the Christmas season. And you've got that whole stretch from Thanksgiving, uh, well, Christmas even to New Year's, where we're just busy with all kinds of things and we're making plans and preparations to make Christmas the best that it can be. Um, the children are working on their program and they're excited about being able to do that. We, oh, we have get-togethers with people and maybe we're expecting uh, friends and loved ones to come and visit and we're looking ahead to the special time we'll have at Christmas and of course everything builds up. Christmas Eve, we have the children's service. Christmas morning, we have a special worship service. Then you go home and you celebrate, you open presents and you have a feast and you have such a good time and then it's over. And it's not uncommon to get into January and all of a sudden you feel an emotional letdown. Or the weeks leading up to Easter. And we have our Wednesday services and we're focusing again on all Jesus did. Then we get to Palm Sunday and we sing those hymns of praise and we say, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And we're building up throughout the week, Monday, Thursday. Then we get to Good Friday. And we take special time to think of the incredible love that Jesus showed to us by being willing to go through all those terrible things for us. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, the Bible says. And we, we see that especially on Good Friday. 
Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. We think about that especially on Good Friday. And we marvel at what Jesus was going through, what he was willing to go through. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That just as we should be cut off from God's love and suffer in hell forever, Jesus was cut off from God's love. And you think, the punishment, the curse, the eternity of suffering in hell that should be endured for every single sin committed by every single sinner, and it was all put on Jesus, and he was suffering all of that on Good Friday. We think of him saying, it is finished, that everything that needs to be done in payment for sin has been done completely, totally, and then he dies. And we leave Good Friday evening in silence, subdued contemplation, again thinking of everything my Savior suffered because he loves me that much. And then we come Easter morning, and Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. And we sing those wonderful Easter hymns, and we focus again on what we have because of what Jesus has done, because he is risen. The confidence we have, we know Jesus is the Son of God. We know Christianity is the one true right religion in the world. We know we can believe Jesus' words, the words of the Bible, because he is risen. He said he would die, and it happened. He said he would come back to life, and it happened. So we know we can believe him. He is risen. God the Father's way of saying his death really has made payment for your sins. Rejoice. Every sin is forgiven, regardless of what you may have done in your life. God does not hold it against you. Payment has been made and accepted. He is risen. He came back to life, and that will be true for us and all others too. The time will come when the Lord will raise us, make us perfect, and in glory, body and soul, we will live with our God and all other believers forever and ever. And we think of what we have, and again, we, we sing God's praises. We sing those wonderful Easter hymns, and we use the special instruments all to try to make it the best service of the year. And we say, thank you, Lord, for what we have. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done. And then, it's done. It's over. It seems sometimes that the first couple Sundays after Easter, it, it doesn't seem quite as joyful. Uh, sometimes the singing doesn't seem quite as good. Uh, there seems sometimes to be a bit of a letdown. And in a, in a sense, that's not surprising. Uh, you get to an emotional high, and you're not going to stay there forever. The, those wonderful emotions, well, they end, and we come back down. And that's part of what life is like in this world. That's part of what we are as human beings. Emotions go up, emotions go down. And sometimes, again, we're, we're at that wonderful emotional high, but it never lasts. The, the feelings end, and it doesn't seem quite the same. But there are some things that stay the same and never change. The message of Easter is still there. He is risen. That's just as true today as it was April 5th. And the blessings are still there for us. And they bring us all kinds of other blessings, joy and happiness and confidence. So that's just as true today as it was two weeks ago. So even though Easter is done, we know the Lord still loves us and the Lord is still blessing us. Our risen Savior still brings blessings to his disciples. And that's what we'd like to use as our theme today as we look at these words of God before us today. Yes, the, the emotional high of Easter is over. But the truth still remains. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Our Savior is still at the right hand of God, ruling all things. And our risen Savior continues to bring blessings to his disciples.
And we see an example of that in these words before us today. Now, you listen to this story. Does it bring to mind anything else? You say, it seems to me we heard this once before, right? What happened earlier at the beginning of Jesus' ministry? An almost carbon copy of this miracle, right? The disciples had been all night fishing, hadn't caught anything. And again, Jesus gave them words of direction. And again, when they followed his direction, they had an incredible catch of fish. That was early in, 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 in Jesus' ministry. And now we see something, again, almost a carbon copy. We're told early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. Once again, we're told they had been fishing all night and they hadn't caught a thing. Once again, Jesus tells them what to do. He says, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. And when they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Once again, Jesus grants a spectacular blessing. And we're told, later on, Simon Peter climbed aboard and dragged the net on shore. It was full of, one, of large fish, 153. So, a large fish that they could keep. Again, all his blessing. And it didn't take them long to figure out that the Lord was behind this. We're told, then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. Peter jumps in right away to swim ashore. And the rest of the disciples follow. Soon they're there. And when they, when they get to shore, we're told, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. We're also told Jesus came, took the bread, and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. The third time. The first time, of course, on that first Easter in the evening when the disciples are by themselves in the upper room. Thomas was not there, right? The second time was a week later, the next Sunday, and they were again in the upper room, and Thomas was with them, and Jesus appeared again. And now this third time, and we don't know for sure when this was. But again, three times in a number of days. A little bit different now, eh? Before his suffering and death, what? They were with Jesus every day, pretty much all the time. But now... Things are different. Things have changed. Eh? In fact, Jesus told them that it was going to be different. He told them that he was going to be leaving them. You know, and he had said any number of times that he was going to suffer and die and rise from the dead. And we're told that they just didn't get it. And he had said on Monday, Thursday, I'm going to be leaving you. And, and we're told in John 16 they were grieved. But he was warning them, telling them ahead of time. And things were different now, right? He had finished his work of paying for the sins of the world. That was done. He rose from the dead, and he's getting ready. He's going to ascend back to the Father's right hand. And he would not be with them in that sense anymore. And Jesus said, I'm with you always, but not in a, in a visible way, where they could reach out, where they could touch him, where they could talk back and forth to him, the way they had been for those three, three or so years, eh? So things are different, and they're going to be even more different. But he does send a message. Even though he wasn't with them in the same sense, even though he was going to be leaving them, he performs the same miracle. See, just as before, he had all power, and he would do wonderful things to bless them, he still has all power, and he was still going to use that power to grant them his blessings. See, the risen Savior would continue to bring blessings to his disciples. And he made the promise, yes, I'm going to be leaving, but he was going to send the Holy Spirit to them. And of course, that happened on Pentecost, and the Holy Spirit gave them the abilities to do some wonderful things. And they were able then to reach out to people and to tell them the Messiah has come. It's Jesus of Nazareth. He has paid for sins completely. Eternal life has been won. 
And we're told 3,000 were baptized on that first Pentecost. And not too long, the number grew to 5,000. And there was persecution, and many of them had to leave Jerusalem. But even then, the Lord was with them always. And the Lord still was working through them with his message to, to accomplish great things, to get the New Testament church going. Again, things were going to be different, but the risen Savior would continue to bring his blessings to them. And that's what we count on too, right? The Savior is risen. Easter, in that sense, is over, eh? And maybe we come down from the emotional high, but the message is still the same, and the blessings are still there for us, eh? And any number of things contribute to the buildup for Easter. And we think again, look at what we have, all because of what Jesus has done. But really, that's something we can marvel at. We can rejoice in every day. Christ is risen. And that's proof. As we go through life, we're doing the right thing when we put our trust in Jesus of Nazareth. And there might be, well, there are various religions out there, and there might be times when the devil tries to fill us with doubts and wonder, then I can always go back and remember, he is risen. He is the Son of God. He is the one true Savior. And if I ever struggle, and sometimes the sinful nature might make me wonder about some of God's promises. Maybe things aren't happening quite the way that I want or as fast as I want, and uh, I might... I might be wondering, but then I remember, he is risen. He really does keep his promises. His words really are true. I can cling to them with confidence and know God is always going to do what he says. He is always with me. He does always love me. He is going to strengthen me. He is going to work everything for my good. And there might be times when... I fall into a sin, and my conscience bothers me. Or it can happen that maybe my mind brings up the memory of something I did years ago and my conscience starts attacking me all over again. Then I remember, Christ is risen, and that's the proof that his death really has made complete total payment for all sins, even for mine. I am forgiven completely by God. God looks at me through Jesus and does consider me righteous in his sight. And I can have that comfort always. Every day, if you look at the paper and you can see all the people who have died, death is all around us. But I can always remember the victory of death is ours. And it'll happen, people I care about die, and it hurts. But I can remember Christ is risen. Death has been defeated. Those who believe in Jesus go to be with him in heaven. And the loved ones we say goodbye to, we know Jesus will raise them again. We'll see them again. We'll be with them again. And when I'm afraid to die, and sometimes I am, even the strongest of Christians can get a jolt sometime and think about dying. I know Christ is risen. I will be raised. I will be made perfect. And I will live with Jesus forever in glory. See, the, the, the message of Easter is always there every day, and the blessings of Easter are always there all the time. And, and the temptation might be there to, to wonder. Again, emotions can go up and they can go down. Um, that's, that's a fact of life. And there might be times when I get into one of the down cycles and I might start to wonder, well, what's wrong with me? Or what's wrong with my faith? How come I don't feel the same way I did at Christmas or I don't feel the same way I did at Easter? Is there something wrong with me? Then, well, the world is sinful, I'm sinful, and feelings are going to change like that. But rather than focusing on my feelings, I focus on the message, which is always true and always the same. Christ is risen. And that means everything, right? He is my Savior. I am forgiven. 
I am going to live forever. Christ is risen. His words are true. And even when I struggle, even when I'm down, I can focus on those words and know they're true. God still loves me. God is still with me. God is going to help me. Everything is going to work out. And that's the, that's the beauty of our faith, is that it's based on absolute facts that cannot be changed. And they're always true, regardless of what I might be feeling at the time. Jesus is risen, and he's at the right hand of God the Father, and he's still is granting us his blessings. He's still watching over us. He's still loving us. He's still coming to us in his word, in the sacraments, in the Lord's Supper to strengthen us, to build us up. And, and that's what we can always cling to. And we say thank you, Lord, for the chance to, to have those special moments, whether it's Christmas, Easter, or some other time. Thank you, Lord, for those special times. But help us to remember, even in the down times, the facts still remain. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. I'm still God's beloved child. And the blessings, the greatest blessings of all, are mine all the time through him. The Savior is risen. And he continues and always will grant us his blessings. And we can always be thankful and find joy in that. Amen will rise. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And we'll join in confessing our Christian faith according to the words of the Apostles' Creed. The Apostles' Creed, we read, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. We'll continue with the offering. As we gather it, we'll sing the posted hymn.
will rise and we'll continue with the responsive prayer of the church. Lord God, our maker and preserver, we praise and thank you for all that you give us day after day. You have given us your precious word to nourish our souls and to protect us from the temptations of the devil, the world, and our sinful nature. Heavenly Father, we pray that you shield us from every kind of danger, sudden catastrophe, terrors of crime, and the pain of disease. Watch over those who travel by land, sea, and air. Keep our loved ones from whatever perils may threaten them. Bless our land, our people, and those who hold offices of high trust. Keep our government and schools upright and strong for the advancement of good citizenship and useful vocations that we may enjoy your gifts of peace, security, and well-being. <laughs> we offer a special prayer this morning, Lord, for Levi and Lucas Beegler, who were hospitalized during this past week. We are thankful, Lord, that they have improved enough that they are able to return to their home. Please, Lord, we ask you to keep on watching over and blessing these newborn babies. Please, Lord, help them to grow and to flourish. Please, Lord, keep them in good health. Again, let your spirit be in them always and guide and watch them throughout their lives. Give strength and comfort also to their parents and all who are concerned about them. Help us to know, Lord, that in all things you love us and are working with your power to bless us. Hear us now as we bring you our private petitions. We bring these requests before you in the name of Jesus our Lord and ask you to hear us. Take all that we have, our bodies and minds, our time and skills, our ministries and offerings, and use them to your glory. Hear us now as we pray the prayer your Son has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. We'll continue with the next hymn.
we'll rise and we'll pray. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you for the love that you have shown us in sending us your son Jesus to do all that was necessary so that our sins are forgiven and eternal life is ours. Please send the Holy Spirit to work in our hearts so we will always put our trust in Jesus as our Savior. We know, Lord, that the, the effects of sin touch our lives, and there are times when it's hard to be positive and joyful, times we struggle and get down. Help us to remember that even then, the facts are still true, Christ is still risen, we are saved, you love us, and we are your dear children. Help us, Lord, to focus on these facts, that we might always have the comfort, the strength, the confidence, and the joy that they give us. Thank you for allowing us to worship together today. Please keep us safe in your care as we leave this house of worship, and if it is your will, enable us to worship together again. We pray this to you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another. Serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. We'll stay standing for the final hymn verse. Please be seated, everyone. <clears throat> Good morning once again. Thank you for being with us today. A special welcome to those who are visitors here with us today. We pray God's word you heard would be a blessing for your life. Please sign our guest book, and if you'd like, we'll get you a visitor packet that'll give you more information about our church. We have a couple of things that we'd like to highlight in the bulletin and a couple of other announcements to make. Uh, first of all, we're continuing with our, our Bible class looking at Islam, uh, we're, we're looking at what, what things should we keep in mind should we have the opportunity to, to talk to a Muslim. So that's what we're going through. We hope you can join us for that. Going through the week, uh, Monday, it looks like I'm going to be gone, so uh, we're not going to have the, the Monday evening Bible class. One more, one more Monday will take off. But uh, the Wednesday Bible class, we should be back in full swing this week. And then Tuesday, of course, DOE and Council. And going through the week, um, Thursday, the children will be presenting their play. And I'm told that they've changed the time. It's going to start at 11 o'clock now on Thursday morning. And that's a, a special performance. All seniors are invited for that. And afterwards, then, they're going to serve a special lunch for you. So Thursday morning, the time is switched to 11 with the lunch to follow. And then Friday night, they'll also give a performance as well. One week from today, we'll be having a, our, our quarterly voters meeting. And I think the other notes are pretty self-evident. That's what we wanted to say. So thank you, everyone, and good morning.